In this tutorial, you'll learn the smart way to use Adobe Illustrator to trace images. Notice I'm using Adobe Illustrator CC, which stands for Creative Cloud, but this also works with Illustrator CS6 on both Mac and Windows. I'll click the Adobe logo to close the splash screen, and let's compare the image on the left, which is the original scanned sketch, with the image here on the right, which is the traced image. I'm going to switch to the Zoom tool, and notice you can press the letter Z to switch that tool as well. I'm just going to drag a zoom rectangle around the face on the left, just so you can see the pixels, i.e. these bitmapped images that you see for the face here. I'm then going to double click on the hand tool to fit both artboards in the window. And again, I'll press Z for zoom, and I'll drag a zoom rectangle around this image on the right, and you can see that's the actual traced images, known as a vector image, which has lines and curves. So this will print razor sharp no matter how large you make it. I'll double click the hand tool and let's take a look at how you would change the scanned image into a traced image. So this image that you see on the left was simply placed using the file place command. So it's just a matter of making a new document, choosing file place, and then placing the image. And then once you select it with the selection tool that you see here, you'll see up here in the control panel that's the actual image. And it's at a low resolution, but it works pretty well in this instance. And then there's a button here for image trace. And just to the right of that, there's a pop-up that has image trace presets. So for example, since this is sketched art, if you choose that preset, you'll see that as the little progress bar goes by there, it's now changed that into a sketched image. It's now a vector image. There's also a little button right here called the image trace panel. And when I click that, you'll see this panel here allows you to take control over the various settings. One of my favorite features is you can press the little eyeball here to view the source image. So you can see if the fidelity is correct. In other words, you know, the artist has certain strokes in here, as you can see some details in the dress are being missed. So there are various scrubby sliders right here, and that's a technical term, for when the pixels are darker than the threshold value, they'll be converted to black. And sometimes, you know, less is more, you might bump that up a bit. But really what's needed here to preserve the fidelity is down here where it says noise reduces the noise by ignoring areas of the specified pixel size. A higher value means less noise. So if I drag this to the left, watch over on her dress here. Now you can see some lines are starting to come back there. I'm going to pull that down to around three or four or so. And you'll notice that if I press and hold this eyeball here, you can see that is closer to the original image there. So some of that, you know, you might want to leave behind or you may want to preserve it. You can always expand the image by clicking the expand button here. And then you have all the power of Illustrator to take control over these little anchor points and perhaps edit parts of the image. Now let's look at another example. I'm going to click on this snowboarder here so you can see another example of how you might use image trace. I'll just move this over to the side. Again, I need to make sure that I select the image. And notice that there's a white background here. Again, I'm going to use the image trace preset, and in this case, I'll again use the sketched art preset. And you'll see that as the progress bar goes by, it actually knocks out the background because of this command right here where it says ignore white. That means it sets the white fills to none, and that's a really useful way of getting rid of the background. And then if you want to further paint this image, you might first expand it by clicking the expand button. And then you might use, for example, the Live Paint Bucket tool over here so that you're then able to make this into a Live Paint object. So, for example, if I click on this, then I can paint using the Swatches panel over here. Notice this is no longer a Live Image Trace document here, so I'll close that. So you're free to pick any colors that you want. For example, if you want to add some brown hair here, you have to be careful not to click on the stroke of the image. And then rather than switch colors here manually, I can simply tap the right arrow key on my keyboard until the color that I'm looking for appears. So for example, I want to paint the face there. You can see the little pointer shows me where it's going to paint. And perhaps I want a red scarf here instead of black. You can see how I can paint that. So you just advance to whatever colors you want to work with. And perhaps for the glasses here, I might use the blue, a little light blue there. And you can see there's different parts that you can paint there. So using Live Paint with Live Trace is a very powerful feature. One last example I'd like to show you, I'm just going to start from scratch by using from the File menu the New command. And I'm just going to accept the defaults here for a print profile, just to get a blank sheet of 8.5 by 11. And I'll use from the File menu 
the place command. And in this case, I'm going to bring in a scanned signature. And I'll leave that as a live link. And I'll just click here so you can see there's a signature. And I'll zoom in so you can see that better. So again, you would use live trace. And in this case, I'm going to choose a black and white logo. And it's a good idea to have somebody use you know, a good dark pen. But this is where image trace can take control, again, with the image trace panel here. I simply need to bump up the threshold here. And it's on a scale of 0 to 255. And right around 253 or so, you can see that it's now doing a much better rendition. If I hold down the eyeball here, you can see the original versus the uh, source versus the uh, tracing result. And then again, you may have to adjust perhaps the paths or corners to fit it. But it's very important if you wanted to knock out the background. And in order to see the background, I'm going to go to the View menu and show the transparency grid. So you can see this checkerboard square pattern. If that shows three, through, it means it's going to knock out to nothing. And watch when I click on Ignore White. Then you'll see that you can see through the holes and the letters there, the background. And that can be really useful if you want to put a signature on a colored background. And then the last tip is, if you want to use this for Microsoft Office, such as Microsoft Word or PowerPoint, notice on the File menu is a really useful command, File Save from Microsoft Office. This will save a properly formatted PNG file, and I'll just call it Signature. And then you can place that wherever you want it, and then that can plug and play with Microsoft Office. I'll go ahead and click Save, and I'm going to switch to Safari just to uh, Mention there's also a free Adobe Ideas product here that you can download for iPad that allows you to uh, use perhaps a stylus like the Adonit Jot Touch perhaps or your finger so you can actually uh, draw images on a touch surface such as an iPad and then that can be opened inside of Adobe Illustrator just by saving it to your Creative Cloud workspace. So we cover this and all much more if you'll visit our website here at thinkbiglearnsmart.com. Uh, we have regularly scheduled classes for Adobe Illustrator, as well as InDesign, Photoshop, and many other products. So if you're seeking certification, perhaps, for the Adobe Certified Associate or Expert exam, we'll be happy to help you achieve Adobe certification. Thanks for watching the video.